What's going on, my people, my people, my people? Welcome to another episode of Through a Culture Lens. I'm your host, Michael Anthony, and of course, I'm with the best co-host on YouTube, the person who has had 21 consecutive days without a bad day, Miss Amber Gray. How you doing, girl? I'm doing fantastic. Tired, but fantastic. How are you? I am doing good. I am doing well. I'm doing well. Um, you know, got through the week, you know, definitely a blessing. Uh, it was blessed, definitely a blessing, especially with us being here in the center of the universe, of course, Washington, D.C., with a lot going on, um, especially right. from last week, you know, through this mm -hmm. week. So it's been definitely a, a calmer uh, week, I would say. Um, yeah, thank God. My God, thank God for that. Um, so anything new you, you, you watched? Any, any new shows, um, any new movies you've seen? I know we're going to talk latest, about one today, but, you know. Yeah, that's basically the latest thing I watched. And then, um, can't think of much. Oh, An Uncomfortable Truth. I watched mm -hmm. that too. Mm -hmm. That's a new thing. Mm -hmm. But what we what we're going to talk about today is the newest thing that I've watched. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And I and I watched the show uh, caught up on it called Your Honor with uh, Brian Cranston. It's on Showtime. Very good show. Um, if you like Breaking Bad, you will definitely love this show. Um, it's yeah, a weekly a show. Actor. Oh man, it's it's so amazing. It's so amazing. Um, but you know, and of course, uh, shout out to everybody in the chat. You know that yes. uh, of course, please. Uh, bring you know bring the fire bring the heat you know um of course you are the third host of this show so thank you again for uh, being part of the conversation so the very first thing that we want to talk about is deuces <laughs> you got see you later you got to go um okay. you ain't got to go to mar-a-lago got to get the hell up out of the white house no, How, go, to I, Mar go to florida please go as far away from us as possible please yesterday was a huge day of course you know um you know tell us how you feel in the chat uh that this man is finally out this was his last <sighs> picture as he was leaving the white house it is so refreshing the past four years have almost been like a movie <laughs> and like it, it feels it like it's unreal yeah, you can't even write this stuff that's how crazy it's been mm, mm -hmm. you can't even write this stuff it's insane it's been an insane four years it's been an exhausting four years it's been kind of entertaining now we're going to go back to what like business as usual politics where people are pretty normal for the most part um which i think people are probably going to miss some people are probably going to miss the the normalcy but um i'm okay with it let's let's go back to the adults running stuff you know please please oh hold on if i'm getting some uh some hits that my audio isn't coming in correctly. Hello? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Maybe okay. that's the audio issue. Yeah, yeah, I just switched up. Um, all right, well, thank you, uh, Jen Hill, Aisha, um, everybody. What about now? Can you guys hear now? Is this better now? How about now? Amber, they said you, found, you sound fine. But uh, apparently, okay. right now, my audio was not all that good. But, you know, we're trying to uh, get these things up and running right now. Um, but uh, sorry about the audio, guys. Uh, don't want to kind of keep the show from going on. Um, just still trying to figure out this technology. You know, sometimes when you're working with some free stuff, um, sometimes you run into some issues. <laughs> stuff happens, this, yes. The, things happen. So, you know, please appreciate you uh, bearing with us um, during this time. Um, but yes, this is a celebration. Uh, yeah, it is. As I was, you know, as we were talking about, it felt like just a reality TV show. It just felt um kind of crazy okay well jen hill um aggie prides my president and then uh kevin spinks okay so everybody says i'm sounding better okay that's what's up that's what's up okay good good good, um, good. um but yeah i don't know i mean it, he's gone I mean, I mean how do you feel i mean do you like yes you were in dc like tell us about how the scene was in dc uh during the inauguration well this is the thing people think because i'm in dc that there's something that there's some extraordinary event or occurrences happening but we're in the hills so we don't we're in a suburb, so we don't really see or hear much outside of the surprise fireworks that we were not expecting mm. last night at 10 something o'clock last night. Uh, we were already kind of like, okay, let's, let's, we kept the little one home just because we're afraid that there's going to be some insurgents. We didn't know. I mean, after the Capitol thing, you just don't know. So we decided to keep them home and we decided, um, you know, let's just work from home like we've been doing, but just, just to be safe. So put them down to bed about, you know, an hour, an hour, hour and a half prior to the fireworks. And we see this beam of light, which obviously is a little jarring, mm -hmm. right? We see a beam of light going up. Mm -hmm. Then we hear a bang, 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 bang and fire and, and sirens. So I'm like, oh my God, we went the whole day. Good. We went mm -hmm. the whole day fine. What is going on? And so Omar was prepared to get in the car, drive around the corner, <laughs> drive wherever we needed to drive. Right. 
And we said, okay, let's check social media, let's check the news. And mm-hmm. then that's what we saw Katy Perry performing fireworks. I think she was at the Lincoln Memorial mm, okay. uh, performing. Yeah, we had no idea. And funny enough, it looks like a good majority of us had no idea because lots of people on social media are like, what's going on? What's happening? We're already on the edge about what happened, you know, two weeks ago. What's happening? So it definitely that caught us off guard. But the rest of the day was, you know, the same business mm-hmm. as usual. Obviously, watch the inauguration and it, it went by fine, swimmingly well, or whatever. But um, yeah, that that caught us off guard. Yeah, I and, and the th- funny thing is because like last week with the whole insurgency thing that was happening, and then just the military uh, presence that's been in DC this whole week. You know, and then all of a sudden they hit you up at fireworks with all these people. Yeah. It's, it's like, oh, World War Three starting today. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And I see Jen Hill. She's like, yeah, definitely thought we're under attack. I mean, I thought either the aliens had finally come or mm-hmm. we're under attack. <laughs> I mean, it was it was it was jarring, especially if you're just sitting there like after a long day, just huh, let me just sit in, in peace and quiet. And it, it wasn't quiet for a good like three or four minutes, maybe five minutes. Right. It was pretty long. And then when we looked and saw the fireworks show, it was pretty extensive. Was it? Yeah, it was extensive. So it, it definitely caught, caught us off guard for mm-hmm. sure. Well, see, and, and just to let you know, I live in Alexandria, Virginia, so I'm like on the outskirts, like right, right. near DC. Um, so I didn't hear any fireworks. I was just straight chilling. Um, so I didn't hear yeah. anything, just watching some movies and stuff like that. So whenever I got your text last night, I was like, yeah. I didn't know who you sent it to. About? Yeah, I was like, I didn't know what you was talking about. You was like, look, he's about mm-hmm. to dip, you know? And I was like, yeah, okay. girl, okay. If y'all need to go, y'all yeah. need to go. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we were not playing around. We were like, okay, no, they uh, they're coming. They coming, so yeah. let's go. Okay. Well, <laughs> you know, well, well, I'm glad everybody's safe. I'm glad there was no uh, issues yesterday. And once again, Trump deuces, deuces you out. Get out, get the hell out of our house. That's the truth. Yeah. So moving right along, today we're going to do our cultural examination today on the documentary film called MLK FBI. Um, now this film uh, just came out. Um, it's actually available on Amazon. Um, I think they released it on the 15th, which was last uh, Friday. Um, but I think in this weekend, it's also going to be available in movie theaters, but you can go ahead and rent it. Um, it's a very, very good documentary. Um, it's about basically the FBI tapes um, on MLK during his rise um, in the 1960s. And both of us watched it and it just, um, oh, um, it, you know, it's just one of those things uh, that was very good. Hold on. You said you, you, okay, I don't, I don't see where that happened though. Uh, I can hear you. Remember? Oh, you, oh, you can't hear me. I'm going to take these out. Okay. okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Can, can you hear us now? I can hear. Yep. I don't okay, know cool. what was going on. <laughs> Something's happening. So. Okay. Okay. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Well, I mean, now that you're back, uh, what was your thought on the film that we, that, that, you know, we're going to talk about? You know, it was good. Um, you know, as we talked about before, as um, black media people, people that have been um, in educational spaces where we're, we've talked about some of the things that were happening during civil rights um, and just like the colloquial kind of like family tales, you you know, you talk about with your grandparents, mm-hmm. your parents. I already knew most of this stuff. Um, this was just confirmation, mm-hmm. I guess. Um, so it nothing shocked me. I was kind of like, OK, I mean, there was nothing that was new, no new information. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was good to see it kind of like, you know, all out there for the world mm-hmm. to see instead of like just these kind of stories that we've heard and, um, you know, and kind of different pieces of like literature you might have read. And this is all just like all in the all in your face, mm-hmm. you know, showing what, you know, was definitely happening during the civil rights and what was happening to MLK. So it was it was good for that for that um, factor. It was good. It was good. And, you know, and we're going to go, of course, go into a deep dive of this film. But, you know this film sort of took us down a rabbit hole, you know, and sort of took us, you know, made us look at uh, the FBI and things a little bit more critically and also other films that we can sort of look at too. Um, and so we just want to give y'all a couple of media references. Um, some of this stuff is in our show notes as far as we can access some of these things. So, you know, just looking at the films that are out there that talks about the FBI and the relationship to especially um, civil rights and black lives. Um, the movies would be, you know, Black Panther, not not Chadwick, not Marvel. This would right. be the Marvel Van Peebles and Marvin Van Peebles movie that they did back in, I believe this was 94. Um, the, the FBI War on Black America, which that is actually free to view on YouTube right now. It's about an hour long. Um, both of us watched it. Um, really good. 
it, it, it has it has drawn more fat in it. It has um, Stokely Carmichael, which his real name is Kwame Tori. T- Toure, yeah. Toure. Yeah, Kwame Toure. Um, also, Elja Cleaver's wife. Um, who is it? Catherine, Ka- Catherine, Kathleen, 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 yeah, Kathleen, um, yeah, so, and, I mean, it's definitely, and also, uh, you know, Geronimo Pratt, while he was actually in, um, prison, um, right. so, and this was made in 1990, it's free, the link, uh, link is available in the show notes, um, and you, and you said you've been a while since you've seen the Black Panther movie, right? The it's Van been Peter. years, but the, the back, the Black Panther movie that I recommended a couple shows ago, The Vanguard, yes, um, that has a lot, um, Kind of some of this information that we're going to talk about today they they have that in there as well yeah correct 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 and then uh also the black klansman and now this is the book um you know from the man who actually was part of the fbi uh black man who infiltrated the kkk um successfully and actually was to you know made some arrests he didn't make as many arrests as he could have but you know this is the book i think the cover is super dope of a black man with a pick his back fist in a hood on um i remember seeing that movie um when it first came out, actually, before it first came out, um, love the movie. Um, once again, and I guess this is another Spike Lee joint that we are putting up here. But he just he just keeps coming out with them. So I don't know. What did you think about Black Klansman? I thought it was good. Mm-hmm. I thought it was really good. Yeah. I mean, I think my, uh, you know, we have some kind of like debates about uh, Denzel Sun's acting ability. I think mm-hmm. 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 I think that might be my only pushback. But that's also been um, about two years. I think that came out about two years ago. It did. It did. Yeah. It did. So Almost three. Yeah, two and a half years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I saw it when it came out. So I don't have, I have like kind of like a vague overview of what went on, but no details per se. Right. It. it was, it was good. Right. It was, it was definitely good. And then um, Mississippi Burning, um, 1988. Um, of course, we're going to dive a little bit more into that. Um, Gene Hackman and the young William Defoe um, about the FBI investigating the killing of three civil rights workers in uh, Mississippi. Um, and it's based off of a true story of the real agents. Um, that one right now, the only way I could be able to find that was on Cinemax. Um, I think you probably still can probably get it off of Amazon if you pay for it, but it's definitely not free. And then the last one is actually the new movie that's coming out called uh, Judas and the Black Messiah um, about Fred Hampton and how an FBI informant infiltrated um, Fred Hampton's organization, you know, Black Panthers of Chicago, and actually gave the police the layout of his apartment and things like that. And I know that you're a big Fred Hampton uh, fan. So what do you think about this movie? Well, I can't wait for it to come out. Mm -hmm. I'm just a big Black Panther fan um, in general. But Mm -hmm. um, I think that uh, this will be, I just, I'm curious to see how they're going to put this together. Um, I'm just excited. I'm excited for it. I, you know, I I like the element of surprise. I have not seen the trailer. I don't like seeing trailers sometimes. I just like to dive into the movie. So yeah, I'm excited for it to Mm -hmm. come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I saw the trailer one time, and it does look interesting. You know, even though Fred Hampton is twenty when he dies, um, you know, so they got uh, the guy Daniel Kalua Kalua um, to play Fred Hampton, which of course he's older, and of course that's a conversation because he's British, right? Isn't he British? British you know, yeah. and so that's a you know you know so for I guess that's a conversation for another day. Um, and then uh, Lakeith Stanfield. I think it was a good cast. I mean, looks wise, it was a really good casting. It's pretty, it's, it's pretty decent. Yeah, I, I would definitely agree. So, um, as you know, so of, of course, uh, that's going to be available uh, February 12th um, is Warner Brothers. So that means it's going to be in the theaters. But if you have, actually have HBO, then you'll actually be able to do it just like um, how if you watch Wonder Woman or anything like that through HBO Max, because uh, Warner Media basically said through 2021, they're going to be releasing all their movies simultaneously in theaters and on HBO Max. So if you have HBO uh, for February 12th, definitely look out for the uh, Judas and the Messiah. Um, okay, and then moving right along. So what we did is we went down this rabbit hole of the FBI. You know, after seeing this documentary, I just kind of took us down this rabbit hole of the FBI. And uh, just a couple of things, you know, just to give some historical context, because of course we're researchers and documentarians and things like that, and that's what we do. Um, so of course, you know, did you want to, uh, kind of talk about the brief history of the FBI? Uh, we can, yeah, I could talk about that a little bit. Mm-hmm. So the FBI was, just, let me get my notes up, let me get your notes up. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it was founded in 1908 by General Charles, I think he's Attorney General, Charles mm-hmm. Bonaparte. Mm-hmm. Um, it was founded during the Theodore, Re- Theodore Roosevelt presidency. It was born with the belief of efficiency and expertise, not political connection should determine who should serve best the government. Um, so this was, um, 
this was supposed to kind of like, you know, the states and local um, government was kind of handling most of like law enforcement. And mm -hmm. this was kind of like this like new federal agency that would kind of be over some of these kind of like outlier um, situations that really the federal, the uh, local governments couldn't really handle. Um, so just to kind of like move past. So once, once um, he formed this, who, what really happened was when Calvin Coolidge became president after Harding died, President Harding died, mm -hmm. he appointed appointed uh, J. Edgar Hoover, who is who we all kind of know is the face of the FBI. Mm -hmm. um, he became the head of the, uh, the Bureau on May 10th, 1924. So during that time, he um, took kind of like, I don't want to say fledgling agency, but kind of. They didn't, they didn't really have a formal training program. They didn't mm -hmm. really have like um, this like bylaws. Uh, they didn't have like uh, any sort of like what you needed to come in. Like you needed to have any sort of qualifications. It was kind of like, have you ever been a police officer in your local town? Okay, join mm -hmm. the FBI. It really, there was kind of, it was kind of loosey goosey until mm -hmm. he came and kind of brought the whole law and order aspect of it. Mm -hmm. So he fired a bunch of people, mm -hmm. people that he figured were unqualified. Um, he abolished the seniority promotion and kind of did this whole thing of like performance evaluations and just really made it like very structured. Mm -hmm. um, he put new age limits on it. You had to be minimum 25, maximum 35. So really you only had this like 10 year window mm -hmm. that you could join. Um, and then um, they started, they actually kind of brought together, this is something that we didn't talk about, but I was kind of reading up on mm -hmm. local jurisdictions were starting around this time, around the early, um, 20th century to use fingerprints for criminal cases, but it was handled locally. Mm -hmm. So the federal government, uh, FBI took that over mm -hmm. as like, that's where they kind of had a lab and did all that stuff. And they kind of took over that, that aspect of it. Mm -hmm. um, they really became um, prominent around like the Great Depression, uh, specifically 1935-ish, uh, they started to become really um, prominent figures um, and people were respecting them um, more and more because of Hoover's, you know, lead. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we have more information outside of that, but that's kind of like the birth of it. And Hoover just took it over and turned it into this like global power. Um, he, he helped um, push the FBI kind of um, image out there as like the good guys and all the stuff through propaganda, through use of the media. Mm -hmm. And then as we'll, we'll get deeper in the conversation, um, he was pulling a lot of strings in a lot of different areas, um, which the MLK FBI documentary we will we'll get deeper into. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah. and, and one of the things about him too that it kind of I didn't even realize, but it felt like you should that you like you said he got appointed in 1924. Right. He retired in 1972. Right. My man was the director of the FBI for 48 years, and what I think we did a number account of like maybe six or seven different presidents yeah. he served under. Which is crazy. And of course, you know, one of his biggest um, things uh, was against uh, communism, obviously, because, right. you know, the uh, during that time, communism was huge. They was trying to make sure that things were going. And what they started was COINTEL PRO, which started in 1953, um, which was obviously their counterintelligence program um, that started in 1956 and supposedly ended in 1971. Uh, Really, I mean, come on now. We know it's still going on. <laughs> right. uh, but it was two discredited and neutralized organizations considered subversive to the U.S. political stability um, and to covert and often use extra legal means to criminalize various forms of political struggle and derail several social movements, such as those for civil rights and Puerto Rican independence. Um, so it was just like, you know, information gathering. And of course, I know most of you have heard, probably heard of Co Intel Pro. Um, but if you have not, then it's something that you definitely need to uh, look into for sure. Right. Um, and then one of the funny things is that when you were talking about the FBI was how, you know, you know, they had a TV show, you know, that that was huge. And yeah. and J. Edgar Hoover actually had um, some say in the creation of this TV show. Uh, this was part of the propaganda machine. Mm -hmm. to get people to see uh again this was kind of like you know that cops and robbers like we're the good guys they're the bad guys mm -hmm. um the russians the whoever whoever they wanted to paint as the bad guy mm -hmm. the fbi was always going to be at the you know the opposite end of the law and order you know mm -hmm. restoring justice mm -hmm. and but mainly it was the restoring justice for who right you know every type of person um the status quo mm -hmm. making sure that um 
that group of people um, remained um, comfortable, mm -hmm. uh, re remained at the top of the hierarchy. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of his whole um, push was to make sure that white men mm -hmm. were the leaders in every group. Any other group coming up, it doesn't matter who's um, who's leading that group, be, be it black, be it uh, Hispanic, be mm -hmm. it um, Asian. If they were not white males, they were subversive. They mm -hmm. were not um, part of the plan to keep America stable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and this is actually a trailer for the new show. <laughs> they get come down about the FBI and all the hard work that they have. Um, and yeah, so it's one of the things um, about the film, you know, that uh, kind of leads us into this next part um, is pretty much the the fact of um, the MLK and like how they talked about how J. Edgar Hoover um, would just look for like these athletic white boys, you know, that was upstanding and everything like that. If they were football players, if they're athletics, then he just had this archetype of who he wanted to be part of the G-Man as they put them in there. Um, and, and right now, you know, we're showing the trailer for uh, MLK, FBI. And like you said earlier, it really does sort of confirm these now i guess they're not even urban legends you know at one point in time it was sort of like this urban legend that the fbi was messing with um with mlk but like this documentary clearly points out there that they were and was really trying to manipulate you know every, you know him his organization and it didn't work as they thought it as they thought it would right so mlk was a huge threat i mean even though he was very non-threatening mm -hmm. as a person um, his just the whole black messiah thing like the movie that's coming out yep the idea of a black person mobilizing a non-white group in mm -hmm. any sort of way that would force the status quo to move the dial to mm -hmm. change mm -hmm. to uh, morph into something that that they had no plans on changing because america was a was built on a, on a particular ideal mm -hmm. right and mm -hmm. black people were not a part of that ideal we're not mm -hmm. a part of that that dream mm -mm. per se. And um, Hoover was really big on making sure that that dream stayed intact, that mm -hmm. white American dream stayed intact. So MLK, even though like we all know, um, you know, he didn't preach violence. He didn't, um, um, you know, get out there and mobilize people to bear arms or do anything like some of the quote unquote other militant groups. Um, but just by mobilization alone, um, by getting all these black people um, he's edu you know, educating them. Mm -hmm. um, and white people. And white people White too. sympathizers. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Just the very idea of somebody that was um, completely uh, the antithesis of what America stands for and what they, how they saw America mm -hmm. was a threat. Mm -hmm. Just his very existence. Mm -hmm. So this movie, not to, you know, I don't know how much, I never want to know how much to give away, especially something that's not really out yet. Right. <laughs> right. So I don't want to give too much away, but essentially they just did everything to discredit him. That's, you know, and, and it, this documentary proves that. I mean, I mean, straight proves it. And it's 20, you know, and of course, with us also just recently celebrating MLK Day on Monday yeah. and we had the inauguration. So once again, it, that's why it all comes full circle. Um, and yeah, the movie, it was riveting and, and it was definitely a lot of found footage, like the access of footage that they were able to obtain stuff that I've never seen before. And I would say that I've always respected Martin Luther King um, Jr., but like my level of respect for him has like now like gone up to a whole nother level. Like just seeing him um, talk and like some of the answers that he gave um, to people, um, like my man was dropping bars. And of course y'all already know how I am about dropping bars. My man is dropping straight bars in this documentary. Um, so yeah, if, if you I wanna mean, see- like That whole well-spoken, you know, oh, you're so well-spoken, or oh, you speak so well for, this man was flipping, flipping adjectives and verbs and nouns left and right at the drop of a hat. I mean, smooth, smooth, straight smooth. You know, and and so I would definitely want again. Um, and, and of course, um, Sam Pollard, a black documentarian. So once again, these are one of the ones that we definitely want you guys to um uh, support. You know, so it's only seven bucks to rent. You know, right now or soon it'll be probably available for you to buy. Um, but definitely want to show some support so then we can get more content obviously made for this kind of stuff. Right, right. Now, now, do we talk about what they were uncovering? Do we talk about that, about the, because because what's interesting yeah. is if you saying, you know, the level of respect you have for him because of just how good he was, you know, mm -hmm. good he was at wordsmithing. Mm -hmm. But really, it uncovers some unflattering things about him, which, mm -hmm. like I said, I think a lot of us already knew those things. Mm -hmm. um, 
And that's going to be something that I know, I think somebody in the documentary said, I really don't want this out there. Like, what what does this prove? Mm -hmm. um, because this is now kind of um, putting a, a dark light on one of our heroes, right? Mm -hmm. But he's a human. He was a human being. Mm -hmm. So there's really not going to be a perfect hero, a perfect person. So that's one thing that's going to be interesting once this is like widely viewed, mm -hmm. what the conversation is going to be about, you know, when it comes to him. Mm. I think so. And, and, and the thing is, I think, once again, those urban legends that we've heard about him, I think they even talked about in Selma and uh, Ava's, uh, du yeah. Renee's movie. Yeah. Remember, they, they talked about the tapes and how they right. tried to get his wife in there, That's you know, right. so so they definitely confirm it in this. But once again, it's like we sort of know the ending in a way, but I would say that it's worth the the, the journey to yeah. watch this, to just, just, just go through the journey and just... And the thing is, it's, it's almost like, you know, when you're a black person, you're watching this, you're just like, mm -hmm. you just got that, con that confirmation yeah. face. Like, exactly. That's all I did watch the movie. I was like, oh, exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's right. <laughs> there was nothing, like I said, nothing new. It was great. They put it together beautifully. I like, I like even how they interviewed um, mm -hmm. some of those people too. You didn't see them until towards the end. I'm like, mm -hmm. that's cool. You really mm -hmm. didn't see them for their voice. Right. So I like how they edited that, but um, agreed. It's just one of those things where it's like confirmation. Absolutely. And this will definitely be something that we'll be talking about when Oscar season comes around, because I believe this will be nominated. Um, Amber, is there any people in the chat that you want to, uh, that we want those shout outs to? Yes, I want to say thank you to Valerie and Omar for joining. We want to make sure you guys know how appreciate, we are so appreciative of you are. Aisha and Jen, all of you, thank you so much. Phil, you guys really don't know how grateful we are for you guys being here and like participating. This mm -hmm. is, this is great. Mm -hmm. So we want to say thank you. I yeah, appreciate you guys. Appreciate you guys always, always. And so, you know, we're going to go ahead and move on. And now we're going to kind of fast forward because once again, we went down this rabbit hole. This movie was in particularly about MLK and the FBI. But then the thing is though, what we really know and what, you know, is that how the FBI infiltrated the Black Panther Party. You know, and right now I'm showing the, um, the opening to the film, the FBI war against black America. Cause when you, when you saw it, it was like the opening definitely needs to be shown in, mm -hmm. you know, in, in the show tomorrow. And, you know, just go ahead. Cause, cause and now you're a Northern Cali, Cali girl, you know what I'm saying? So of course you have deep roots within the black Panther party. So what is your take or your feelings or what you know about COINTEL pro and black Panthers? Well, this is this is one of those things that I, I learned about, but it's not. I, you know how when you learn about something when you're younger, but you don't understand it until you're older. Mm -hmm. Like I, I didn't. I, I knew that there. I, I knew for at least two decades mm -hmm. that there was infiltration. Like when I went on the Black Panther tour in college, we went on a tour with the ex Panther, mm -hmm. and he kind of told us all these things. And at like 19, 20, you're like, yeah. I mean, of course, the federal government wanted to neutralize you guys. You guys were, you know, they they made they painted this picture mm -hmm. of you know who you were. You were dangerous. But it's not until when you're, you know, when you're a little bit older and you kind of get a little bit more um, information and more knowledge just mm -hmm. about how deep the infiltration was. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were, you know, posing as members because the Black Panther Party would let anybody in. That was mm -hmm. another thing. It was kind of like this open door policy, which mm -hmm. was kind of to their detriment. Mm -hmm. So anybody off the street could say, oh, I'm down for the cause. And they, they're they in. Mm -hmm. If you leather leather jacket in a, in a beret, you, you're in. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So to see how easy it was um to join just kind of actually almost tells you how pure their their intentions were mm -hmm. because to them it was like we're just trying to get lunch at the we're just mm -hmm. trying to stop police overreach mm -hmm. we're just trying to stop um you know our our families from you know being uh, torn apart by by you know government agencies and, 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 and you know all these things that you know, I already knew, but to know that it was like deeply, like the actual feds were deeply, not local. Mm -hmm. I think in my mind, I was thinking just like the local Oakland Police Department. Mm -hmm. But to know that the federal government was in conjunction, working with local Chicago, you know, Oakland police mm -hmm. to discredit, to start in fights, to mm -hmm. make sure that marriages were destroyed. Um, it's, uh, it's just like, how low can you go? You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you know, uh, it's it's not. I mean, it's not, I'm not gonna say it's not surprising because it's not surprising. Um, because I even didn't, you know, when I did my documentary on Walls That Bleed about the 1969 Dudley A and T uprising, you know, that was one of the things that they even told me. Like a small group of students, you know, pro, you know, organizers in Greensboro, North Carolina. Greensboro, North Carolina is not a huge city, but they still found a way to implant 
a, and they weren't even Black Panthers. Black Panthers was in Winston-Salem, which is about 30 minutes north of Greensboro. But they still found a way to implant an FBI informant in this high school, college um, uh, organization, you know, black organization. And, you know, and, and the thing is, it wasn't to gather information, you know, and that's the thing, though. It wasn't even to gather information to maybe even try and get a RICO case, you know, like what they do with the mafia, you know, or the cartels or anything like that. No, they were purposely set up in there to disband the entire organization to actually get them to start um, uh, like fighting with other organizations. And there's also some other documentaries. Now, I don't know if you remember uh, Original Gangster. It was on BET. Um, it was hosted by Ving Rhames, I believe. Yeah, it was it was right after um, the original gangster movie came out with Denzel Washington, and then BET had these 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 documentary series about like you know black gangsters. You know what I'm saying? For some reason, it was glorifying you know black gangsterism at that time, which we're going to get to that in a moment. Um, but uh, but basically, in that documentary, it showed how like a lot of black revolutionary groups, you know, radical groups. And I'm not even saying necessarily radicals, just black organizations were infiltrated and then were propositioned to start selling heroin and crack in order to fund their revolution and also to get and then they would even start beefs between neighborhood um black organizations like at one point in time they were probably working together but then of course here say this here say that then next thing you know you have these two organizations fighting once another and the the gangs that you know of now the crips the bloods the you know the other ones you know that are out there all stem from black revolutionary groups and it's all because of how the fbi um infiltrated and made this whole situation um what it is right right now I'll I'll put this out there i know i know um now is this recorded uh yes, all this yes. stuff is already out there we're not um digging up new information this mm -hmm. documentary upon documentary about all this stuff um um, even, you know, as we get deeper into like kind of the white supremacy conversation, mm -hmm. our new president just announced it, just literally the only sitting yes. president yes. to ever denounce white supremacy. Yes. All this information is, is out there. This is not news. It's mm -mm. not new. Uh, -uh this is not news at all. No, no, no. I mean, I mean, and the thing is though, like, um, in the show notes as well is that you can even see the, um, uh, the FBI files, like you can go on their website and see stuff that they have out there. Um, about, you know, how the FBI, uh, uh, well, in a way they, they phrase it in a different way. <laughs> like, like what was the story that you told me about, about how the FBI helped, um, some black people? Yeah. What, what, what yeah. was this story? So the FBI has been, um, they, I mean, their whole purpose was to keep, you know, keep peace and keep order within, mm -hmm. within the United States. So they, they have been tracking, um, you know, the rise of the Klan. They've been tracking all these kind of, um, extremist groups. Mm -hmm. And so, um, they only gave like three cases that they talked about that they actually like did something when it came to mm -hmm. um, the extremist groups in the South. And one of those cases was there was a young black man. I, I want to say this was probably in the twenties. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, he was a or maybe um, more than thirty. So I think he I think he, he dodged World War II or war. I'm not sure if it was World mm -hmm. War II or not, but he dodged the World War II draft. Mm -hmm. um, and so when he came back, he had the kind of like the scarlet letter on him because he, he dodged the, the draft, but mm -hmm. he had a white girlfriend at the time. Um, and the white supremacist groups in his town found out that he had a white girlfriend and the FBI kind of stepped in there and protected him. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the, that's on their website, kind of one of the cases where they made sure that uh, a black male was not killed mm -hmm. at the hands of the Klan because of um, his dealings with the white woman. This consensual dealings with the white, a white girl. Right, right, exactly. And... I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's really they haven't done anything. We'll keep, you know, kind of going. And of course, this is the trailer right here of uh, Black Panther, the Marvin and, Mel and Melvin Van Peebles movies, which it is, the whole thing is free on YouTube. Link is in the show notes if you want to go ahead and get a little nostalgic. Um, Actually, it's a, a YouTuber um, page called Real Black um, TV. Um, I think they put that in the show notes. They have, not only do they have this Black Panther uh, film, but then they also have the FBI against the uh, Black America film as well on their site. Um, but, you know, yeah, let's just go ahead and get right to, you know, the FBI and white supremacy. Okay, because I think, you know, at least up to, to, up to that point, you know, like we know how the FBI has infiltrated MLK's organization. 
and then how they did the Black Panthers, you know, and basically how they tried to discredit and disband them all. So then, of course, we wanted to be like, well, what efforts do the FBI have against white supremacy? So then, of course, they have this KKK series, which I think this is the article that you were talking about that you read from that that mentions that um, that safe that, that that black man being saved, correct? Um, you know, and so, and believe me, this is a very brief article that's on the FBI website. It's a very brief article. It's on their, almost everything that we're showing is on their website. It's directly on the website, as you can see, you know, and once again, I believe I do have the, sh the links to these articles for your viewing, um, as well. Um, now, of course they said that they've been fighting white supremacy since the 1950s, but the only thing that I can see where they started actually paying more attention was in this article, once again, on FBI.com's website. This was written in May of 2012, and they said domestic threat, white supremacy extremism, meaning that the FBI at least started to acknowledge now that white supremacy could be a domestic threat, you know, which is different than a domestic terrorist, right? Right, right. You know, um, well, I... So in 2012, this is, you know, they, they, you know, once again, this article is available. And then, um, and of course, uh, uh, didn't want to show this one just yet. Well, you know, I'll go ahead and go to this one. So this is their crowning achievement right here. This is their crowning achievement as far as, um, the FBI's involvement as far as helping out civil rights people. And of course, Mississippi burn, if you guys don't know, then once again, this is on FBI's website. And of course they have the name of the movie, um, is a, a movie. I mean, I'm sorry. It's about the incident is about whenever these three civil rights workers um, were mysteriously killed, um, but nobody, they couldn't find the body, they couldn't find the car, they just disappeared. And so um, because of these three were missing, then the FBI sent their best agent down there. And if you ever seen the movie, um, which I'm about to go ahead and show y'all the clips from it right now. Oops. Hold on. Oops. Do I have it up here? Oh, I do. Okay, Oops. here we go. Sorry. Um, but it's, you know, and one of the questions that they ask in the film, as far as Fran McDormick's character, I believe, the young one, um, was would the FBI even have been there if the boys, if the two boys weren't white? No. You don't think so? No. I don't. <laughs> well, now, do I have any OGs in the, in the chat? Has anybody ever seen... Um, Mr. Berman, I know you said you've seen it, but it's been a while, right? I've actually never seen it. You've never seen it? Nope. Well, I mean, it's, it's, I, like, I just recently saw it um, yesterday, because once again, going down this rabbit hole, it is a, one of those, another tough movie to watch. Um, and it definitely has that white savior, you know, like we talked about in our last episode of the white people coming down and helping these black people. Um, but really, you know, and, and it does show like the horrors of what Mississippi was about during that time. Um, as far as lynching and the burning of the churches and basically how the local government was fighting with the federal government about the cases because members of the Klan were part of the police department, you know, and the city councils in these cities. And once again, that's what the FBI was built on, as you talked about before, was them having more federal influence over these corrupt local governments. And this was just an example of them doing that. But this is their crowning achievement as far as the FBI um, dealing with black folks um, and civil rights and anything like that. And so it's, you know, I, I don't know if that's enough. I just don't know if that's enough. Right. Yeah. I mean, I don't know either, but I, I definitely think that had this been three black faces, I don't think they would have stepped in. Mm -mm, mm -mm, personally. Mm -mm. Yeah, I don't think so either. I don't think so either. Um, and of course, once again, you can you know read about uh, Mississippi burning and then of course, uh, the article is on fbi.com. We have the link in there. Um, of course, you know, please give us a thumbs up um, and subscribe uh, to the show as well. Keep on forgetting to do that. Uh, <laughs> um, but then in 2019, once again, just finding these articles, just looking as far as like, what is the FBI's response to white supremacy? Then in, tw in 2019, they write an article saying that now they're confronting white supremacy. In 2019, this is, you know, I think this was June. So this is like a year and a half ago. It right. seems like that they are late, but are they late or are they, or is this something that's purposeful? Right. That's the question. And then NPR, of course, um, has this, um, this interview where the FBI announces that 
racist violence is now equal priority to foreign terrorism. How does that sound? That, that came out uh, February 2020. Okay, so last 2020. Year. Yes. You know, it's it's great. Um, I'm glad that they're giving um, uh, putting a spotlight on it, but mm -hmm. we can talk about present day now, right? We can talk mm -hmm. about where we mm -hmm. sit. Mm -hmm. And where was the energy there? Mm -hmm. You know, where was the um, the urgency to make sure that that didn't happen? Mm -hmm. We had um, I've got more than a handful of some of those people that stormed the Capitol were on their watch list. Yes, yes. So it's kind of kind of baffling. Mm -hmm. You think? Yeah, like <laughs> you know, if they're on the watch list and they're coming up here, it's just a little. And here they go. And here they, here go. they go. Yeah. Of course, yeah. and this is in reference to Black Lives Matter. Um, you know, this is a video that kind of shows the police presence um, during Black Lives Matter, but then yet the open door policy for the alt right uh, Trump supporters during the uh, the the siege, I guess. Yeah, right. um, and you know, and, and like you said, like they had these people on their watch list, and then of course information comes out that oh, some of these people are part of law enforcement again. You know, just like in Mississippi Bernie. Like right? yeah. that's a history. Exactly. Um the, the young lady who got shot. She was a former Air Force uh veteran, you know. And so they have all of this information and then now they're starting to make arrests. And what was that set that you told me earlier about the number of arrests? Yeah, so probably I think sixty arrests um for the storming of the Capitol. Let me get my notes up. I want to say there was 60 arrests compared to thousands uh, for the Black Lives Matter protest in June. Mm -hmm. Now, mind you, I think there was a number difference. I think there was a lot of people here in June compared to the storming of the Capitol. I don't even know the number of the mm -hmm. storming of the Capitol, but just eyeballing it, mm -hmm. it wasn't nearly as many people, mm -hmm. um, you know, compared to Black Lives Matter in June. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, they definitely arrested... Um, Quite, you know, a lot more people during the Black Lives Matter protests, and they didn't get anywhere near the White House or the Capitol. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Um, and, and, and because, you know, and wasn't it reported that the Capitol chief got word, you know, and like people want, he want resources from the FBI, if I'm not mistaken, to say that there might be some aggression that might be overtaking and things like that. But then the Capitol uh, chief was like, no, nah, we're good. Yeah. You know, yeah, um, the FBI tried to, you know, they knew, they tried to warn. Um, Capitol Police, who has jurisdiction, obviously, in that area. Mm -hmm. um, but as we see how it, how it ended up. Right, right. And then uh, uh, Phil, uh, my Uncle Pete, that's my Uncle Pete. That's how, that's how I know him. Uh, um, of course, she says, you know, from a government standpoint, the FBI has always known about these groups. They have. But then the thing is, though, what are they doing? That's, that's, and that's why we're only talking about this, guys, because we've noticed a stark difference between, um, you know, when black people are just literally, black people literally just saying if you guys could stop killing us please and give us like fair trials mm -hmm. and just treat us fairly um mm -hmm. compared to people that came to the capitol to cause harm right uh, mm -hmm. most most people um during the black lives matter protests weren't going to cause harm per se obviously harm obviously things happen i'm not going to like paint them as like boy scouts and girl you know right uh, mm -hmm. brownies mm -hmm. but at the end of the day most people are there because we're, we're tired of seeing black deaths we're tired of things not moving mm -hmm. um, manner judiciously um so that's why people were marching as opposed to what happened on january 6th um they were kind of giving the red carpet just to go into the capitol and literally defecate in in people's offices and take you know uh, sensitive information um out of mm -hmm. some of these congress people's offices and um were i mean they were there i don't know how long you know how long they were there they were in there for a long time it's like, like two nobody, hours it was yeah, like it was like two three hours something like that it was like it was crazy <laughs> just yeah, chilling so taking pictures I mean, they stole yeah. Nancy Pelosi's laptop, and the girl right. finally turned herself in. Exactly. So Good. those sort of things is kind of like, okay, how how is this happening on one hand, and then all we know what's happening on the other hand if you're a person of color or just a supporter mm -hmm. of a person of color, and just who's going to take the lead and really kind of like neutralizing and squashing, um, you know, the insurgents of these kind of alt right groups, and mm -hmm. then just the intent of, you know, these um, civil rights groups essentially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm be fair that's yeah. it <laughs> I, I mean you remember in portland so like today did you hear or was it yesterday i'm sorry there was 150 protesters 
um, in protesting in Portland yesterday about the inauguration and went to the Democratic National Office there and spray painted it and trashed it. Like wow. it's, it's one of those second, like second page news things. Like they're really not talking about this. Yeah, I didn't hear about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? You know, who's not talking about these people? If you look it up, yeah, the Oregon, in Oregon, they, um, some people, uh, like 150 of them went to the Democratic offices and spray painted and trashed their whole offices, which is, wow. which is kind of crazy. Like, you know, how are you going to, how are you going to let them destroy things because they're mad about what they're wrong about? You know what I'm saying? Like they're mad because they didn't get the election results, but then whenever, uh, black people, you know, whenever, which they said, um, that 93% of all the protests that happened last year was peaceful, you know, we're all peaceful. So how is that, um, you know, they are snatching people up in Oregon, in Portland. Remember when those riots were happening, remember they had the people, the feds, they didn't have any badges, snatching people up, throwing them in the car, um, you know, questioning them for God knows what. And those protests were right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah, something got burnt down, looting and all this other stuff, you know, which that's a whole nother thing because people really misconstrued that, especially during the Katrina time. Uh, we never, I remember you telling me about, you know, black people were looting, but what was it white people were doing during Katrina? They were gathering supplies. There's a difference here. <laughs> we're just trying to live. Trying to, no, I'm just saying, it's yeah. like people are just trying to live, but somehow the looting and the gathering supplies are two different things. Like they're both doing the same thing, just trying to survive. That's right, it. right, right, right. Um, and, and just this perception and, you know, just the threat. And like, once again, like we talked about last episode about the um, black brute, you know, and how this in our minds, we have been, you know, that black men are just are naturally just dangerous and black right. women are just angry all the time. So then people right. put that in their mind. So of course, then they're going to bring aggressive force to us like rubber bullets and tear gas and all that other stuff. But then because it's, these are white people, they're nice. You know what I'm saying? They're not going to do anything. But then of course they show up to Michigan and take over the Capitol, you know, with guns. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That was the start to me. It was like, oh, you're going to let them do that? Like we, like we can't even walk around uh, with three or more people. You know what I'm saying? Right. But that probably get picked up because it could be anti-establishment. Uh, but then these white yeah. people who are carrying Confederate flags, um, who Which are is not anti-establishment. Yes, 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 yes. And matter of fact, had the noose hung on, on the. Like I just, I just, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm speechless. Go ahead, girl. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I'm just. I, I know that one of the articles we read, um, the New York um, NYPD. I think he was the chief said about January 6th, we didn't take it, not verbatim, mm -hmm. we didn't take it seriously because they were such normal looking people. Yes, yeah. As opposed to, what, I guess black people who are not normal looking? <laughs> right. The ideas he's got in his head, I don't know. But that's, it, that's kind of the perspective that it comes from. It's, uh, they don't take the threat seriously when it's one of their own. Mm -hmm. because that's normalized. It's normal uh, mm -hmm. to be an angry white man because look at what's happening with the immigrants coming here and this group doing that. So I sympathize with them mm -hmm. as a white police chief, but I do not get why you're mad, black person. You caused your own demise. Mm -hmm. You are a thug. You caused that, don't you know? Like that's kind of like the mentality that we're dealing with here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it just, it's just not fair, you know? <laughs> Uh, I, I mean, you know, and, and the reason why, you know, once again, we're doing it on the MLK FBI, but it's like we can see a trend of whenever black people try to fight for equal rights, the federal government would put in money and manpower to disrupt just equal rights, just for black people to just be considered citizens. Um, and I keep reminding people, you know, we've only been citizens for a little bit of time. We've only been citizens for what? Like true one hundred percent citizens, what since sixty eight? Yeah, yeah. You know, since sixty eight, right? Um, you know, once we got all of our rights, where we can go to the store and we can, you know, go anywhere we want to buy, where we want to work, oh, where we want to, and yeah. vote, yeah, and do all those things. You know, so we're still like we're fifty two years removed from that. Um, but then you have this long history of white supremacy. You know, obviously, you know what happened um, on Black Wall Streets and what happened in Wilmington in eighteen ninety eight, and you know just the massacre that's happened because of white supremacy, um, but yet 
there has not been any arrests, really, when it comes right. to white hate crimes, even though the FBI knows that they're on the rise. Um, right. and, but yet you don't do anything uh, prior to, you, you know how these people are going to be, but yet you're still, I don't know. It's, it's like a lackadaisical response, even though they know there's going to be bloodshed. And that's the sad part. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, and so, yeah, that's what I mean. You know, that's pretty much what our episode, this episode is going to be. I think we're kind of running up on our hour time. So, once again, thank you guys. Uh, shout out Uncle Pete for uh, always keeping the chat live. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's just this history of the FBI and how they treat black lives and then why they don't do the same when it comes to this alt right, you know, this right. violent group that has history upon history of demonizing and torturing Americans, right? <laughs> like, like torturing yeah. Americans um, in so many different ways. But yet just recently now they're starting to be like, oh, they might be a problem. Exactly. But black people have always been a problem. That's right. So, you know, that's, that, that's, I don't know. What, what, what else you got, girl? What else you got? No, that's, I mean, that's kind of it. I mean, mm -hmm. the one thing that, um, you know, we've got, yeah, I think we've kind of like hit a lot of what we wanted to talk about. Mm -hmm. And we just really wanted to kind of like juxtapose like the media portrayal specifically of what's been happening. Obviously the last year has been just like a media frenzy of, um, <laughs> yeah, of just, uh, you know, insurgents everywhere. Like you mentioned, Oregon, it was like on fire basically half the summer. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So many things really going on and it just, you know, when Trump obviously has been out of office for like two seconds, but mm -hmm. when he was in office, it, I mean, people kept saying it's a divided America. We're so mm -hmm. divided. We're so divided. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of that is systemic, right? It's mm -hmm. like we're divided systemically. So mm -hmm. of course we're going to be divided socially mm -hmm. and the media kind of like puts a spotlight on how, um, obviously like we talked about last week how we're portrayed mm -hmm. which of course how you're portrayed becomes gospel to people becomes you know you know that one black person did something so therefore all black people are going to do that thing always mm -hmm. right so but not not every group gets that it's like another group can do the same thing and it's just that individual person that mm -hmm. did it not the whole group but us we've been painting this broad stroke systemically it's just like problem uh we're just problematic and not worth it and you know slum you know live in slums and don't raise our kids i mean just think of any negative you can think of it that's pretty much associated with us mm -hmm. um yeah so it, it's just it's a it's just unfortunate but just to go back to the movie um it's definitely worth the watch it it, it puts uh like a cherry on top of this of the sunday we've been eating about mlk's life mm -hmm. you know all these years and i think it's definitely worth the watch um and especially um, that documentary on YouTube. If you don't, you know, want to pay the money to watch this right now, that documentary is like an hour, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, the FBI against Black America. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a really good documentary. Um, they had, I think, some former FBI agents, mm -hmm. I believe, that yeah, were. Yeah, they did. Maybe. They did. Yeah, so it was definitely eye opener for sure. Right. Uh, and, and then even before that, um, that movie um, that you had mentioned um, about Philadelphia when they bombed those people, wasn't the FBI involved in that too? They were. <laughs> the movie uh let the fire burn yeah okay. well, similar to the fred hampton thing so it was like local police was given the okay excuse me given the okay um by the federal government to do that to that uh that organization in philadelphia right to bomb them. right and so and so you know this once again it's just one of those things just calling it as it is you know um of course you know doing something on this of course we hope that you know intel pro doesn't follow us but you know a president you know um, our vice president, hopefully, you know, with them bringing things to the forefront. And like you said, all this, all this information is available. This documentary, I mean, they have all the license that they want to talk about it. Um, you know, that movie FBI against Black America that was made in the 1990s. So we're not saying anything that's new. We're just sort of finding that through line, you know, for everybody. To, you know, the conversations that we're already having probably in our kittens and other Zoom calls that we're having, you know, right. about the federal government and police's um, perception of us yeah. as a people. And it once again, goes back to what you were saying earlier about what we talked about last week. Mm -hmm. the, the reason why we bring those tropes is because, yeah, are these things starting to deep into real life? Right. You know, um, which I think brings us to what our next episode is going to be about. 
bitch, I know that you're very passionate about this. I know you're very passionate about this. Go ahead and, t and, and tell us uh, what this is. And, and, and tell us what we're talking about next week. Yeah, so we're going to be kind of, it's just kind of like the same uh, general thing that we brought up last week. The media literacy is one thing that I feel like um, all people are lacking. Um, mm -hmm. We're consuming um, just tons of media now, specifically with social media, mm -hmm. having these smartphones. We're consuming so much media, and so much of it is so biased, so much of it is untrue, so mm -hmm. much of it um, people are absorbing without like really thinking critically about mm -hmm. um, the validity of it um, mm -hmm. on top of just like um, how it's affecting them in their day-to-day -day lives, how it's affecting their families, their little ones, how impressionable kids are watching certain things, which is why you have rating a rating system. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of going to, we're going to be kind of addressing um, some of the things that, you know, we've seen of ourselves, specifically black Americans mm -hmm. um, in the media and kind of does art imitate life or vice versa? Mm -hmm. What well, came first, chicken or the egg? Um, we have to kind of examine ourselves who um, we are as a people and then how we're kind of seen in the media and how we kind of absorb and take on some of these traits, um, these tropes specifically, like we talked about last week. Um, and we, uh, you know, take those on as personality traits sometimes and just kind of sift through some of that, some of that stuff. It's really kind of a complicated mm -hmm. topic, but yeah, we're going to try to bring some light to um, how important it is for people to really just be like really critical about what they're consuming. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, and, and this will once again be part of a series that we're doing because the thing is though, you know, we're talking about these heavy topics and we're talking, and you know, and the thing is though, we're trying to be as specific as we can with each episode about what we talk about, but we know that these are definitely larger things. So definitely something you know about police brutality you know that's a that's a separate thing than what this fbi thing is on you know but then media literacy you know but that what we want to do is try to build this narrative to where we're gaining momentum so of course once again give your folks a thumbs up uh subscribe because each episode is going to pretty much piggyback off of the last episode um and how perceptions and how we also have responsibility as viewers to take this responsibility as you're talking about just like they talk about financial literacy you know, mm -hmm. let's start talking about some media literacy and some responsibilities that we need to discuss on that. Absolutely. Mm hmm. All right. Well, folks, um, in, any any other shout outs? Any more shout outs we want to give out to some people? Uh, Thank you guys for being here. Thank absolutely. you for coming. We're always appreciative. Yep, yep, yep. Thank you. Yeah, Jen Hill, Ayesha, obviously, Omar, always in the building. Um, yep. And then Valerie. Um, and then Kevin Spinks, that's my cousin. Uh, definitely, definitely got friends and family up in here. That's why it's the dry run. Um, but I think, yeah, I think that's it, man. I think, I think this was a good show. Yep. All right. Well then. Thumbs up and uh, actually hit the notification bell too. So you know when we're coming on. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I think we're going to try and keep it around this 530 Thursday time. Um, but definitely keep your notifications up because you just never know when we may want to jump on and just talk to y'all. All right, fam. Right. All right, then we'll definitely hit that thumbs up. Appreciate y'all on, uh, love y'all salute, yes. salute and holla at your folks. All right, peace out.